Hello. Uh, good morning. I'm going to talk to you today about progressive delivery. And uh, let's just start asking you some questions. Uh, who here uses Jenkins? Raise your hand. Like everybody? <laughs> Anybody using Jenkins X? Some people. Who knows about Jenkins X? Oh, a lot of people. All right. Good. So as uh, Ni Hao, is that right? I got the right tones and things. Um, so I work at CloudBees. Uh, I wrote the Kubernetes plugin for Jenkins. So anybody using it? Any use? Anybody using Jenkins and Kubernetes? Yes. Okay. So you hate me already? No. Um, and I've contributed to a lot of open source projects, both uh, at Apache Foundation and Eclipse Foundation and other places, now Jenkins. And let's talk about what we came here today, progressive delivery. So progressive delivery is a term that I did not invent um, that includes different deployment uh, processes or methodologies that tries to avoid this all or nothing deployment. So you don't want to deploy something that may break everybody's uh, experience at the same time. So you try to deploy it uh, a little bit at a time and in different ways. So you, not, you do not replace existing versions, but you deploy new versions and run both in parallel for a period of time until you figure out if uh, the new version is okay or is broken. And when you decide that uh, it is okay, then you deploy to the rest of the of the of your users. So there's some uh, expectations there that you're going to have some metrics and you're going to have some monitoring and some logs to decide whether your application is running successfully or not, uh, to decide whether you want to continue the rollout or not. So continuous delivery is very hard, and progressive delivery tries to make it easier to adopt because it reduces the risk associated with uh, deploying to all the users at the same time. So this uh, concept behind progressive delivery is to make uh, your life easier when you deploy uh, new things into production. There are several ways of doing progressive delivery, and this is all uh, terms that already exist out there and you heard about. So you have rolling updates, and you can do that with Kubernetes today. You can just uh, do a rolling update that updates all the pods uh, in your uh, deployments. So basically, you have services that point to the uh, to the pods, and then you, Kubernetes will keep upgrading one pod at a time, and that way until you hit uh, all of the pods. It's a bit limited what exists today in Kubernetes, so I mean you don't, you would have to manually do uh, stop if you see any problems, and you have to manually check that everything it's uh, it's working fine. But that's an option, and there's there's some ways to do it more efficiently. Then you have also blue-green deployment, where you basically have uh, an old version. Uh, I never know if it's the blue or the green one. Let's say it's the blue. And you deploy a new version, but you keep the old version running. And you just use the router or a DNS or some, conf uh, some load balancer to send everybody to the new version. So you send everybody to the new version, and if you detect any problems, you just switch the load balancer of the router to the point of the old version, and so you have an instant way of uh, recovering if the new version is broken. So instead of having to go through another deployment process and taking some time and, and do something like that, you have a, an instant way of switching from a uh, existing version and the new version. And you can keep this running for a period of time, both of them, and uh, until you uh, figure out that that's the new version is good to go. The only problem is that it requires uh, twice the computing capacity that you would otherwise require, because you have to run both at the same time. 
Another option is canary deployments. And this is something that big companies do, Netflix, um, Facebook, I guess, uh, a, a lot of the companies do. And you, basically what you do is you send a percentage of the traffic to the new version. Same as in blue-green, you have the two versions running at the same time. And you start sending a percentage of the traffic to the new version. And if that small percentage it's, uh, looks good, because you have monitoring, you have some checks in place, and everything looks good, then you add more people to the new version. So you can do that uh, based on a percentage of users. So uh, you could say, let's send 10% of the users to the new version, and if everything goes well, send 20%, 30%, and so on. You can also do more advanced things where you can examine HTTP headers, and you can see, say, um, or IP uh, locations. You can say, send people from, and, and this is something that companies do, send people from New Zealand to the new version and try with them before some selling, uh, before uh, delivering it to the rest of the world, or send uh, people from inside their corporation, inside their own company, to the new version, so internal employees test it before other people test it. So this is this combines both blue green and rolling updates in a in a way that it's uh, it takes some things from both of them. So one thing I like to say is like monitoring is the new testing uh, because this way with testing you can only test for things you know that may fail. With monitoring you're basically checking that things are not failing in ways that you didn't expect. And you're checking for issues that are happening in production. And with monitoring, you can react to these issues automatically. You can have auto automation that uh, um, basically uh, gives you the, the ability to react to those issues that are happening in production. So what has all this to do with Jenkins X? Well, so Jenkins X runs on Kubernetes, and most of you already know this. Um, it uses Kubernetes for everything. It uses Kubernetes to run your builds, to deploy your applications. If you have Kubernetes applications, it will deploy them in Kubernetes. It includes a bunch of different tools, uh, open source tools, uh, like Docker, containers, uh, a scaffold, Graph, Helm to do the Kubernetes applications. Um, it uses Nexus as an artifact manager. Um, you can also bring your own chart museum to store the the Helm charts. Helms are uh, Helm charts are the packaging format for for the Kubernetes applications. And it uses Tecton and Prow. And I think I have a slide How about that. Okay, so. Backing a little bit here. Helm is the package manager for Kubernetes. So if you're deploying Kubernetes applications, with Jenkins X will automate uh, the packaging of Helm charts for you. And the whole life cycle between uh, packaging your application and deploying it to a stage in production and different environments. The scaffold is a project from Google that uh, allows you to build Im Docker images uh, with different backends. So it, Jenkins X uses it to abstract uh, the Docker build um, behind the scenes. So Jenkins X also uses, can use both Docker build or Canico as a backend. And Canico is the project that allows you to build Docker images without the Docker daemon. So if you are running on a Kubernetes cluster, it's a lot more convenient to use Canico because you don't have to expose the Docker, uh, the Docker daemon in the host. Scaffold also allows you to do builds with other, like if you're running on Google, you can uh, uh, run Google Cloud builds. Um, if you're building Maven, image, Maven projects or Gradle projects, uh, you can use uh, Jib to build your uh, Docker images based on the JDK. And it will do caching of all the JAR files that are used in your images. Draft is a project that generates a Docker file and Helm chart. So if you don't, if you are importing a project into Jenkins X and you don't have a Docker file or Helm, if you only have your application code, 
draft will generate all that for you. And then you can customize it, of course. And uh, basically allows you to move an application into this world of Kubernetes deployments and Kubernetes packages. So tying both things together, progressive delivery and Jenkins X, um, there's, there's a guide in the, in the Jenkins X documentation there where uh, one thing we do on Jenkins X to, to enable this progressive delivery and Canary deployments is to use Istio and Flagger. And you can install Istio and Flagger into Jenkins X environment uh, very easily. Just uh, JX create add-on Istio and create add-on Flagger. Istio, who knows Istio here? Like everybody, okay. So the most important features for Canary deployments in Istio, uh, I mean, besides the, all the other things that Istio can do, is that we can control the flow of traffic in our Kubernetes cluster with Istio with very advanced rules. So we can create virtual services and we can say, send a percentage of traffic to this version, send a percentage of traffic to this other version. So that's one thing we want to use there. And the observation uh, part of Istio. It, when we enable Istio on our application, we get all these metrics in Prometheus uh, where basically without having to touch our application at all, we get all the traffic metrics for, for our application. We get how many how long is the request and response taking? What is the code result of the of the request? Um, and CPU and memory and other things that we uh, get for free, we enable Istio without having to touch our application. All these metrics get stored in Prometheus, which is the, basically the monitoring thing that is a service that is used by default, um, and it's included on Istio. We we use that. And Flagger is an open source project that is uh, uh, from WeaveWorks that automates the promotion of Canary deployments. So basically it uh, uses Istio, creates Istio virtual services and sends traffic uh, to the new version. So every time you do a new deployment, it will modify Istio and say, send 10% of the traffic, send 20%, 30, 40, 50 to the new version. And it continuously monitors the Prometheus metrics and checks for errors. And you can set the whatever metrics you want, but you can basically say, uh, if uh, more than 1% of the requests are 500 errors, automatically do that rollback. So it automates the whole checking your monitoring uh, statistics and decide how many people and, uh, you want to see you want them to see the new version and whether you want to roll back or not. So it basically controls the whole rollout in a canary way and automatically roll back if something is wrong. And to do that uh, on Jenkins X, we just need to add some sections to your to our Helm charts. Um, we have some examples and what we do is uh, we say enable canary, uh, enable is true, you decide what host do you want to uh, to use for your Istio uh, gateway. So in this case, it's Croc Hunter Istio US Sancho.org. Um, you say what's the entrance, and that's what the Istio virtual service is going to be created for that host. And on the Canary analysis, you can decide how often do you want to check for metrics, um, how many metrics do you want to uh, to fail before you do roll rollback, in this case, like five. If, if my metrics fail, fail five times, then automatically do a rollback. And the step weight and max weight is how much uh, percentage of traffic you want to send to the new application. So in this case, is send 10% uh, every minute, every 60 seconds, up to 50%. So it's send 10%, 20, 30, 40, and then 50 and 100. And you can define the different metrics that uh, you want to check. You can say, uh, in this case, uh, for the request, 
uh, no more than 1% should fail, so no more than 1% with a 500 error. And in the duration seconds, yeah, you can say that I don't want that uh, my request go over 500 milliseconds. And if they do, then if any of these two metrics fail, uh, do an automatic rollback. And to do that, you just have to use your normal Jenkins X promote uh, command. And because Istio gets, when you install the Istio add-on and the Flagger add-on, Istio gets automatically enabled in your production environment, in the JX production namespace typically. So when you do a promote, this will automatically do a canary rollout. So it's not, it's not uh, no longer doing a deployment of, for every user on your Kubernetes cluster, but it's going to do the canary rollout. Um, what time do you have? So what uh, Flagger does, as I said, is uh, edit the virtual service in Istio. You have two services, one for primary, which is the old version, one for canary, which is the new version. And these two deployments are running at the same time. And Flagger will, will change the virtual service to send 10%, 20%, 30%, and so on to the new version by looking at the Prometheus and using the Kubernetes API. So a different way of seeing it, this is when you do a deployment, uh, it will create the V2 deployment. It will start sending traffic 5, 10 to 50. And then at the end, it's going to scale down it's going to stop the V1 deployment, and it's going to scale down the, the, v, the V2 to, to match uh, your metrics. And the other thing it has also, well, I'll show you this in a demo in a second. And it also has the Slack integration, so you can get uh, some notifications when, whenever your, metric, your Canary deployments are happening and if they, if they fail. So I'm going to do the demo with, uh, I think, the second example, the Croc Hunter Java. And let's see if this works, because it worked last night. It didn't work this morning, so no warranties. No, no internet. That's not good. So what I'm running here, okay, uh, let's, I'm running my application, which is Croc Hunter, which is chasing crocodiles with lasers. What could possibly be more fun than this? So I'm running this on a staging. That's my staging URL. I'm running this in production, and that's my, okay, connection. And this is my production um, Istio enabled URL. And so I want to make a change. Let's see, this is my GitHub project. And I'm going to make a change. And, you know, because shooting crocodiles with lasers is not very environmentally friendly. So let's make a change. And let's do that. Let's say no lasers. And I want to create a branch. And I open a pull request. OK. And this is going to build my application. It should be here. Okay. And I'm going to check the logs. My application is building. Yes, it is building. So what, what I'm going to do is, uh, this is all building using Tecton on the back end. So it's all serverless type of build. Uh, new pods are being created just for this build. 
and is running the test, packaging the application, and so on. And this is going to get deployed uh, to a preview environment. And then I can see if my, if my changes are good. OK. And here at the bottom, it's starting the build with uh, Canico. So you can see here it's uh, pushing to the Docker registry. And I'll go into the infrastructure in a second. Um, yes, everything is getting pushed. So I got my comment from my bot here saying my pull request is not approved and it's building and so on. And okay. Okay. And Jenkins X is creating my preview environment. Yes. And in a second. This is going to, OK, preview application is now available here. And it should comment on my OK pull request. So Jenkins X is telling me my pull, your pull request is available in this environment. And well, we show you that. I'm going to go and approve my changes. I have to do it with a different user because, as I, of course, I cannot approve my own changes. Uh, I'll do it f before looking at it because it's uh, it, uh, approve. Here, approve. <laughs> so I can look at my pull request and I see that my changes are there. Now I'm throwing fish instead of lasers. This is what I wanted to do, of course. And you can also talk to your bot and, and, and do some things like very useful, like uh, meow, and then you get pictures of cats. So I have approved my uh, pull request. So this is going to get uh, deployed to my staging environment. And I can go here. It's hard to do this one-handed. Uh, so JX, get applications. Um, I have uh, 0034 deployed to staging, 0033 deployed to production. And I'm going to do a, a promotion in, in a second once my application is deployed into, into staging. And I'm going to show you a little bit what's behind the scenes. This is all using. Anybody using here Alibaba's cloud? Yes, some people. So this is all using Alibaba's cloud container service. So uh, that's my cluster uh, running on, on the Singapore region. And actually, I think I, this is my pull request. I can close that. And this is a staging which is, is still the old version. I can promote my new version now and show you the, the Canary rollout in the spirit of going with uh, time. So DX, promote, dash dash version, 0034, uh, is it? Zero zero thirty four or zero zero thirty five. Um, this is still not there. So once this gets built, I can promote. Uh, I think it's going to be zero zero thirty five. This is still building. Ah, zero zero thirty six. So once zero zero thirty six is uh, is uh, built, I can promote it. Let's do JX promote. By the time I end tip typing, maybe it's built. Crook uh, under Java. This version. 
So, sure. Environment production. And I'm going to show you the logs of Flagger that I should have here. So when the application gets promoted, you will see Flagger doing the Canary rollout. Let's see if this has updated. Okay, so it, it is updating now, probably. There it is. So my staging environment is updated. And I should see here 0036. Oops. Well, th this is what happened before. It's uh, the API server is not responding. Oops. Okay. Yeah, no, I have I have connection. Now this is what happened before. Is uh, for some reason the the Kubernetes master is is not responding. It eventually worked, but yeah. okay. Well. Can switch to try to switch to my other cluster. Yeah, so what happened is uh, the Kubernetes master is not responding, so you cannot do the promotion or anything with the cluster. Let's see if I can, okay. Oh, okay. Now it's responding. So I have zero zero thirty six. Oh, whoa, wait, wait. So I can do the promotion now. So, you know, when you deploy on Jenkins X, everything gets tracked by Git. So promoting is basically changing your Git environments to reference the new version. So this is what it's doing. It's going to create a pull request in the production environment, this pull request here. So It's uh, saying in my production Git environment, uh, change the, the version from 0034, whatever it was, to 0036. So now this is building, and when it's built, 0036 gets deployed to, to, to production. And that's going to run. And let's get the logs here. Let's get the logs here again. And let's get the Grafana interface so I can show you in the in real time what's happening. Okay. Maybe it went down again. Okay, I think it's not responding again. Yeah, 
IO timeout. Let's disconnect this. Okay. All right, so let's see Grafana. Um, and okay, I'm gonna create some traffic so you can see some metrics here. And this is hitting my Istio URL. And this should start showing some traffic. There it is. Some CPU and some traffic going up. And because the one that's one thing that Flagger also does is uh, if it detects there's no traffic, it's going to assume that your new version is bad, and then it's going to do an automatic rollback. And and here we can see the flagger logs. So it has decided there's a new revision detected. So it's scaling up the, the new version deployment. So it's keeping the old version and it's deploying the new version. How much time do you have? No idea? Okay. Plenty. <laughs> so in a second, it's going to decide to start sending uh, here. Here it is. It says starting canary, canary analysis and advance uh, canary way to 10. So 10% 10 of the traffic now is going to the new version. If I hit my, uh, you can see the commit here is 2B55, 2B55, okay. So this is the old version. And 10% of my traffic, if I hit this 10 times, I should get eventually. I'm getting the wrong one. Maybe not. So let's take a look at the logs, see what's happening. So 10% of the traffic is going there. Now it's 20% of the traffic because my metrics have, are succeeding. I am in the right place. 2B55. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I can see in Grafana that uh, on the left hand side I have my previous version, on the right hand side I have the new version. So I have. Uh, I can see metrics like the request volume and how many of the requests have succeeded, 100% on both sides. I can see the request duration, all these metrics uh, I can get here. So uh, the new version is getting traffic. And is this caching something? Okay, and now I'm getting some of the traffic is going to the new version uh, with the fish. And is because uh, Flagger is telling me now 30% of the traffic is going to the to the new version. So this is BE and uh, there may be some caching or something in the middle. Uh, I got the old version now, so that's it. Depending on the percentage of traffic, some users get the old version, some users get the new version, and you can do the advanced things like use HTTP headers, use uh, use uh, location of the of the user, and things like that. So you can see the um, uh, the examples there, and it's using Quarkus, uh, as I say, because it's a uh, if you're using Java on Kubernetes, this is a new microservices framework, and you can even build, uh, compile to native um, code, so you don't need to the JVM anymore. 
uh, it uses Graal VM to do the to do the building into native images. And that's it from me. If you have any questions, ask me one question. One question. Yes. Ah, uh, the JX CLI. What is the base? Um, so JX CLI it uses uh, the Jenkins X CRDs. So it allows you to in, uh, it allows you to uh, query the AP, the Kubernetes API the same way kubectl, but with dif different commands for the new CRDs. And then it adds other functionality like JX create cluster allows you to create a cluster into a cloud provider. JX install allows you to directly install Jenkins X into your Kubernetes cluster. It has some extra functionality in there. So JX promote basically tells you, it tells um, Jenkins X to deploy the a specific version in a specific environment. So you have a different environments, you have the developer environment, you have a staging, which is always updated with the master branch. You have production where you can manually promote versions. And then you have the preview environments that you get one for each pull request. And promote will allow you to move things from one to another and create your own environments. Yes. More questions? No? If I was running in Alibaba's cloud, Yes. Yes. It took some time to get it working, but it does. Uh, you can also run it in the Chinese region uh, with some tweaks. Um, we're working on getting that working. But you need the, um, the license to be of the government thing for to, to do the deployments, to, to have the HTTP endpoints. You need the, the license. But it works in any other any other region. Yes, the how Flagger helps. Okay, so when I did the JX promote, if you are not using Flagger, uh, the new version gets promoted into production, and all the users get the new version, all of them, hundred percent. If I'm using Flagger, it's going to do the scale up a percentage of users every time, and it's going to check the metrics. So if I can, uh, I could fake, a, if I do another deployment, I can fake uh, errors, and then you would see how Flagger basically says, you know, this metric has failed. Uh, more than 1% of the requests are 500 errors, so I'm going to automatically roll back. So it's going to do all the handling of the Canary deployment for you. Yes. 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 How does the pipeline code look like? I think that's going to be in the talk from the, in the afternoon. <laughs> How easy it is? Well, it uses Tecton, uh, this example. So it's going to be very easy and very hard at the same time because the pipeline code, it just looks like this. So I'm saying use this build pack, which is Maven Quarkus, and then it's going to use uh, the, a standard pipeline defined by Jenkins X. So I can override things, uh, but right now I'm using the default pipeline. So I don't have to do anything. It's just saying, I oh, just use this pipeline. This is going to use a Docker image, uh, Docker image that has the Graal VM installed for the compilation. Is going to use some custom things, but that's all defined on Jenkins X. Oh, it's one of the default pi pipelines. Of, well, this one is one that I'm uh, contributing, uh, but you have a set of default pipelines, so you just need to reference. No, this is using serverless Jenkins with Tecton, which they are going to talk about now. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos.